Arkansas Governor's Quiz Bowl is brought to you in part by the Arkansas Division of Higher Education. Local broadcast of Arkansas PBS programming is made possible in part by Community Bakery. Scratch-made breads, pastries, cakes, treats, and locally roasted coffees served daily at two locations in Little Rock, 1200 Main and 270 Shackleford. The Arkansas Governor's Quiz Bowl is a statewide celebration and recognition of scholarship. As an Arkansas PBS tradition, the program has been testing students' knowledge and bringing future leaders into the spotlight since 1985. I want to thank everyone who participated in Quiz Bowl this year and congratulate those who have made it to the finals here today. Welcome back to the Arkansas Governor's Quiz Bowl Association State Championships for 2022. I'm your host, Christina Munoz, and we are coming to you live from Arkansas PBS Studios in Conway. Let's hear it. Yay! Well, we have had some great matches so far this year, and we still have two more to go. Coming up now, our 6A championship between Benton and Russellville. Let's meet our teams now. I'm Emma Dudley and I'm a senior. Viva Benton! I'm Ethan King. I'm in 12th grade and this is my homies back in B-Town. I'm Blake Covert and I'm a junior. I'm Joseph Morris. I'm a senior Southern Miss to the top. I'm Joe Dorsey. I'm a junior and hi Nana. I'm Natalie Williams, I'm a sophomore, and I'd like to thank our starters for doing all the work. Hi, I'm Olivia Krulin, I'm a sophomore. Hey, Inga, I made it! Hi, my name's Owen Schwartz, I'm a sophomore, and when can I see my lawyer? Hi, my name's Erin Brazier, I'm a senior, and go BHS Yellow Team. I'm Clara Ehorn, I'm a senior at BHS, shout out to Yellow Team. Hi, I'm John Dorsey, I'm a sophomore at Benton High School, and hi, Will. Hi, my name is Graham Isley, I'm a senior at Benton High School, and I'd leave my chicken biscuits on the bus. I'm kind of hungry. Hi, I'm Michelle Hastings, coach of the Benton High School Panthers. It's a great day to be a fighting Panther. Hi, I'm Dev Donda, senior at Russell High School, and I'm committing to Happy Campers Daycare. Hello, I'm Justin Contreras, senior co-captain of the Russell High School team, and let's fight climate change. Hello, my name is Hayden Daniel. I am a sophomore at Russellville, and I do not play the tuba. Hello, I'm Tyler Mitch, sophomore, and I used to play the tuba. Hi, I'm Clara Nupp. I'm a sophomore, and I play the tuba. Hello, I'm Michael Colburn. I'm a senior at Russellville High School, and I'm, I'm scared of tubas. I'm Eden Robbins. I'm a senior, and I'm here too. I'm Don MacArthur, a sophomore, and I play the tuba. Hi, I'm Randy Bacorn. I'm a sophomore, and this is Gustavo. Hi, I'm Crawford Rash. I'm a sophomore, and I'm part of the tuba hive mind. Hello, my name is Eileen Panetta. I'm a junior at Russellville High School, and my team's find it funny to make fun of my height. Hello, I'm Greg Simpson. I'm a sophomore at Russellville High School, and what's a tuba? Hi, I'm Johnny Barham, assistant coach at Russellville, and get ready to watch a good one. Steven Close, assistant coach at Russellville. Hi, Mom and Dad, how's my hair? Hi, I'm Paul Gray, head coach Russellville. Thanks for breakfast, Mr. Harpenau. Go Cyclones. <laughs> Love getting to see their personalities and getting to see them have a little fun in those introductions. We have Linda Smith with us. Now you've been a close watcher of Quiz Bowl for many, many years. So what can we expect from these two teams? Well, these two teams are very good, I know. <laughs> I'm not sure how many years each of them, but they've all had state championships. And so Benton and Russellville are gonna fight it out. <laughs> They are going to fight it out. And I know that they've had so much competition experience that they'll be very good. And they won't have to want for getting questions because they'll answer. Wow, sounds like it will be a great matchup. Thank you so much. And it is that time. Let's turn it over to our quiz master, Steve Patterson, and find out who will be the 6A state champion of Quiz Bowl 2022. Steve? Round one. Thanks, Christina. Here we are at Arkansas PBS, and this uh, 
37th, 38th year for the uh, Quiz Bowl in Arkansas. And uh, <clears throat> every year we've had Quiz Bowl, we've been here at the studios at Arkansas PBS, so it's been very exciting. Um, all of our questions are on the high school level, at least that's what we tell you. And uh, they're all based on the curriculum of Arkansas high schools. So we've scoured the state and picked out the hardest questions we could find for you all today. And I think they're very well representative of um, the types of things you should be learning in class. All right, it's good to see y'all. The Quiz Bowl gets no better than the 6A state championship every year. And this one's going to be a good one. All right, everyone have their hands on their buzzers. And here we go. This Welsh poet died of pneumonia. Uh, Red Hayden. Thomas. Yes. Yes. That Welsh gives it away right off the bat. All right, math computation. For a certain online store, the distribution of the number of purchases per hour is approximately normal with mean 1,200 purchases and standard deviation of 200. For what percentage of hours will the number of purchases at the online store exceed 1,400? All right, uh, Red, Dev? 3%. No. All right, uh, Ben, just in time. Blake? 13%. The answer is 16%. Sounds like uh, helpful math, but all I heard was blah, blah, blah. All right, number three. What series of mountain ranges in northwestern Africa extends... <laughs> Uh, Red, Dev. Atlas Mountains. You're right. Kornberg Castle, located at Heisingor, a seaport in northeastern Denmark, provided the setting for William Shakespeare's uh, Red, Tyler. Hamlet. No. For William Shakespeare's Hamlet. By what name is the castle known in that play? No answer, it is Elsinore, Elsinore. All right, what bone, commonly called the heel bone? Uh, Red, Justin. Calcaneus. You're right. By what name is the horizontal shift of a trigonometric graph known? Uh, blue, Graham. Phase shift. You're right. Question number seven. This historical area of North Britain beyond Roman control roughly corresponded to modern day Scotland. Name this area which later came to be used as a poetic name for all of Scotland. All right, Red, Tyler. Alba. No. Emma. Hibernia. It is Caldonia, Caldonia. All right, question eight. In what work, Oscar Wilde's only published novel? All right, Red, Claren. The Picture of Dorian Gray. You're right. This term describes one who champions a less accepted cause solely for the sake of argument. It was also, all right, Benton Joseph. Iconoclast. No. It was also a former office in the Roman Catholic Church for one who critically examined the life and the miracles attributed to an individual who was proposed for be uh, beatification or canonization. All right, uh, Red Hayden. Devil's Advocate. That's what we were looking for, good. All right, look at the sophomore doing well. All right, number 10. Nuclear chemist Glenn Seaborg won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for the isolation and identification of elements having an atomic number greater than 92, uranium. By what collective name are these 
Uh, Benton, Joseph. Transuranium elements. You are right. Two answers are required here. What two nations' mutual boundaries were defined after World War II as the north-south path of the Oder, O-D-E-R, and Nysa rivers? Uh, Russell Wildev. Israel and Palestine? No. Uh, Emma. Syria and Lebanon. It is Germany and Poland. Germany and Poland. Uh, number 12. What type of triangle forms each face of a regular tetrahedron? All right. Uh, ben Blake. Equilateral triangle. Blake, you're right. All right. This Irish dramatist, known for his role in revolutionizing comedic drama, was also a literary critic and a prominent British socialize, socialist. Name this man, winner of the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1925, whose work Pygmalion um, read Tyler. Shaw. Yes, George Bernard. Nice. <clears throat> what device is a spinning wheel or disc typically mounted in a pair of uh, blue Emma? Gyroscope. Right. At the age of 19, he qualified for his first U.S. Open. Named the Dallas native and graduate of the University of Texas, who solidified his ranking as the number one golfer in the world by winning the Masters <laughs> just a few weeks ago. Uh, Russellville Tyler. Tiger Woods. No. It is uh, Scotty Scheffler. Scheffler. Uh, question number 16. When, uh, when Earth is at this point in early July, it is about 3 million miles <laughs> farther. Uh, Red Dev. Solstice. No. Three million miles farther from the sun than at its perillion in early January. Give this astronomy term the point in the orbit of a planet, comet, or other body most distant from the sun. Uh, blue, Graham. Aphelion. That's correct. What is defined as the set of possible values of a random variable with a probability assigned to each? All right, uh, blue, Graham. Sampling distribution. That's not what I have. All right, uh, red, Tyler. Derivative. Probability distribution is the answer we were looking for. <coughs> this was the first American third party, first political party to hold a national nominating convention and the first to offer the electorate a platform of party principles. It began when William Morgan disappeared mysteriously after threatening to reveal secrets of the Freemasons. All right, uh, Red, Def. Wig party. No. All right, uh, Blue, Graham. The Free Soil Party. No, it's the Anti-Masonic Party. All right, question 19. <clears throat> what collection of 15 short stories by James Joyce presents... Uh, all right, uh, Ben and Emma. Dubliners. That's right. This prominent American newspaper publisher founded and edited the New York Tribune. Name this leader in the anti-slavery movement whose editorials played an important part in molding public opinion. Uh, Red Dev. Garrison. No, especially during his 20 years before the so American Civil War. It is Horace Greeley, Horace Greeley. All right, that was the last question of the match. Do we have any challenges? None here. Any challenges over here? You do have one? All right, they're uh, making a decision about a challenge on this side. So uh, while they do that, we're going to pitch it back to Christina and Linda.
All right, thank you so much. So a potential challenge going on. Sounds like they're discussing something may or may not have a challenge. But what's your take so far? I think this is one of our closest matches. It is, it is, and they are very good, both teams. But I think maybe the challenge might have to do with an answer that would be acceptable as well as the one that Steve had on his favor. Okay. Because sometimes there are alternate answers that will work just as mm -hmm. well. So I think that's what it might be. Of course, I could be totally wrong. You know, sure. it's just up to the coaches to figure out if they want to make that challenge. We are just speculating here, of course. And so another question that has come up is these questions. Where do they come from? How do they get them together? There are question writers who develop the questions for high school students because they have, there's all levels, elementary, junior high, there's high school, there's college. So we have question writers all over the United States who do this. And our questions this year have come from a former coach in Arkansas oh, wow. and so um, she's done a really good job of writing these questions but each year the questions committee out of the board we have a committee and the board then decides if they are going to accept that writer's bid because they ask them to put in bids and give sample questions so they'll know what kind of questions they might give and that way they can pick a question writer who will give them good questions and not uh, try to break the bank on the Quiz sure. Bowl Association. <laughs> Absolutely. And so they really look at who is contributing and the quality of the questions before right. choosing somebody. Right. Exactly. Um, and let's go back to kind of the basics of these challenges. It's been a while since we've talked about that. So how does it work? Who does the challenges and how long do they have? Okay. A challenge can only be five minutes. Okay. Five minutes. And the coach has to present the challenge. They're the only ones who can approach the judges. And the judges then have to make a decision. Is this challenge, is it a good challenge? And the coaches have to present written material that show that their answer could be considered correct unless it's a procedural channel challenge. Okay. And in that case, a procedural challenge means maybe they didn't, uh, the uh, quiz master or someone didn't hear uh, correctly what the student said. Perhaps it's just a uh, matter of the timing. There's all kinds of things that it could be. Okay. But the coach has to present it and then the judges have to decide. And it's kind of tense to make that decision because it's hard, especially yes. when it's a really really close game. And it's a fast paced situation exactly. we're dealing with too, so it can mm -hmm. be very tricky. So this challenge was actually withdrawn, so it never fully became a an official challenge. It has been withdrawn, they've got it figured out, which means we can turn it back over to the quiz master and continue. Go ahead, Steve. Okay. Well, welcome back here to Studio C on the uh, uh, Arkansas PBS station here in Conway. And uh, we had a potential challenge, and uh, the coach um, uh, looked at it and finally ended up deciding not to make the challenge. So uh, they have that right to look for alternative answers and things. All right, so at the end of the first round, I told you this was going to be a great game, Benton 60 and Russellville 60. Uh, so this is going great. Um, at this time, we're going to let you make substitutions and take a short break. This month in Passport on the PBS video app. What is that? When we put it in our heads, we're in the fastest roller coaster we've ever been on. Pops Orchestra, for a celebration of uniquely American music. Celebrate the music of country. These and other shows from Arkansas PBS are available with Passport on the PBS video app. Hi, it's me, Blueberry. Join us this summer for Blueberry's Clubhouse. We'll see a whole new crop of friends for the very best adventures in Arkansas. That's phenomenal! Good work, friends! We did it! Blueberry's Clubhouse.
Clubhouse returns this summer, only on Arkansas PBS. Oh, wow! This is wonderful! <laughs> oh, we're gonna have snacks here, and we're going to tell stories, and oh, we're also going to uh, tell, tell, tell stories. I already said that. Let's talk about snacks. Um, apples and bananas. Oh, I think we're gonna have smoothies here. Oh, this is also where I'm gonna meet my friends, Max and Sophie and Chef Sean. This month on Arkansas PBS. As Vera investigates, she'll uncover a web of secrets. You better not be lying to me, Pet. Vera. It's my annual garden party. It's the highlight of the season. Is that my child? I have information relating to the murder of a police officer. Only on Arkansas PBS. Welcome back. Substitutions have been made and we are ready for round two, which is toss up questions and bonuses. Let's go over to our quiz master, Steve Patterson. Round two. Well, welcome back to the studios here for the 6A state championship in Quiz Bowl 2022. And uh, Russellville has brought in uh, Crawford to play, our affectionately known as Crawfish. And uh, we're glad to have him into the game. And uh, this is an important round. I've seen many a game change because of the toss-up with bonus rounds. So good luck to both teams. You have to get the toss-up right to get a chance to confer on the bonus, as you well know. All right, everybody ready? All right, hands on our buzzers. Here we go with the toss-up. Their removal from Athens raised questions about the ownership of cultural artifacts and the return of antiquities to their places of origin. Name this collection of ancient Greek sculptures and architectural details located in the British Museum in London, now called the Parthenon Sculptures. No answers? Uh, the Elgin Marbles is what they're known as. All right, no harm or foul done on that since neither team got it. This Spanish author wrote about the uh, Buendia family of Macondo. Uh, Benton, Emma. Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Mm. Judges. Poorly written question. Um, do you want me to accept or go to a different question? Okay, sorry about that. They don't have his name on here at all. They have the book that he wrote. So we're going to go to a different question if we need to. All right, here's our next toss up question. What scientific instrument is used for detecting the existence of small electric currents? and determining their strengths. All right, Crawford. Voltimeter. No. Ben? It's a galvan galvanometer? Galvanometer. Say it for me. Galvanometer. Galvanometer, thank you. Galvanometer. All right, this man probably did more than anyone else in his time to enlarge the British Empire in Africa. Name this statesman and empire builder of British... All right, uh, Red Dev. Rhodes. Rhodes, Cecil Rhodes, good. Many people in Africa would not call him a statesman. All right, your bonus is in British royalty, okay? And it says to identify the royal house in, with which these queens are identified. Anne. Stuart. Yes. Mary the First. Tudor. Tudor. Yes. Victoria. Hanover. Hanover. Yes. Elizabeth the Second. Windsor. Windsor. Yes. All four correct. Very nice. See, Crawdad, you were in just the right time to give them the answers for that. 
All right, let's go to another toss-up uh, question, and it happens to be math computation. Trying to get that second bonus question. All right, here we go. In a right triangle, the cosecant of theta is 17 over 8. Find the cosine of theta. All right, uh, Blue, Blake. 15 over 17. You have earned your team a bonus, Blake. Good job. Good job. And uh, your bonus is called Music. Name the American composers of the following musical works. Number one, Rodeo and Fanfare for the Common Man. Sousa. Sousa. No. An American in Paris and Rhapsody in Blue. Gershwin. Yes. God Bless America and White Christmas. Irving Berlin. Irving Berlin. Yes. And Washington Post March and The Stars and Stripes That's Forever. Susa. Susa. That's Susa. The one you didn't get was um, Aaron Copeland. Aaron Copeland wrote Fan for the Common Man. All right, but three out of the four ain't bad. Good job. All right, let's go to the next uh, toss-up for both schools. This long ballad by Oscar Wilde, his last published work, presented an eloquent plea for prison reform. Name this work, which was inspired by his two years spent in prison. Uh, Red Claren. The importance of being earnest? No. Ben? It's the Ballad of Reading Jail. Ballad of Reading Jail. This city served as the home of the popes and as such the center of Christianity from 1309 to 1377. Name this city that's located in southeastern France. All right, uh, Blue Joe. And you? No. All right, uh, Red Crawford. Vatican City? No, it's Avignon. Avignon. What principle states that the rates of diffusion and effusion of a gas are inversely proportional to the square root of its density? Named for the British chemist who proposed it in 1831. All right, uh, Red Hayden. Graham. Graham is absolutely right. Good job. All right, so you've earned a bonus called Saints. All right. Name the following saints of the Roman Catholic Church who were apostles of Jesus. Okay. The patron of lost and desperate causes. St. Jude. I think so. St. Jude? Yes. The patron saint of fishermen. Answer, please. Andrew? Yes. The patron saint of tax accountants and bankers. Matthew. Matthew. Yes. And the patron saint of love, loyalty, and authors. Peter. No, it was the uh, apostle who said Jesus loved him the most, uh, St. John. John. But three out of the four, good job. All right, we have one bonus left and two questions to try to get it. So let's see if we can get it on this one. The death of this general at Chancellorsville. All right, uh, Blue Joe. Jackson. Jackson is right, Stonewall Jackson. All right, so you've earned the final bonus for your team. And it is called literature. Answer the following questions about Homer's Odyssey. Okay. Give its literary genre. Epic. 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 Epic.
pick? Yes. Well, more specific. Epic poem or epic poetry? Epic poem. Yes. <coughs> All right. The length of Odysseus's journey. Seven years. Seven years. No. What was Odysseus's destination? Ithaca. No, that, that's where he came from. Is that where he's trying to get back to? Ithaca. Yes. Name of the Cyclops Oedipus, uh, Odysseus and his men encountered. Polythemus. Polythemus. That's correct. And the only one that you missed was the length of his journey, which was 10 years. 10 years. All right. And you uh, have gotten us out of the second round. And uh, let's look and see if we have any <coughs> challenges over bonus questions. None and none. Okay. So our score at the end of that time is a very close one, isn't it? Uh, Russellville, you have 115. Benton has 110. And uh, Emma, you'll get to pick first from the categories I'm about to read. And then Russellville, you'll pick second. All right. Here are the three lightning round categories specially chosen for the 6A state championship. All right, here we go. You might want world geography. Give the former name of the following present day nations. Or you might want American government. Name the Supreme Court cases being described. And then your third choice today on Lightning Rounds is playwrights. Name the playwrights of the following works. Teams, you have one minute to make a decision. All right, I believe we're going to take a break at this time. Okay, Frisbee, let's remember, it's one bark for true and no barks for false. You bet, you're a great teacher. All right, let's try one more, okay? Arkansas PBS is Arkansas's largest classroom and provides training for educators and hands-on activities for students all across the state. Bark. What about Arkansas PBS makes learning fun? Bark. Good boy! Now, let's try one more. Okay. Frisbee didn't eat my slippers. Oh, Frisbee, how could you? No, I'm sorry, Miss House. I was gonna tell you, but it slipped my mind. Please don't let it slip your mind and donate to Arkansas PBS today so that you can support the educational success of kids around Arkansas. Burke. And we are back. A lot of discussions going on about which categories the teams will do. So we are ready for round three. This is the lightning round. Let's go over to Steve Patterson, our quiz master. Round three. All right. Well, welcome back here to the studio. And we are in the halfway point of our 6A state championship quiz bowl match and um, they selected their categories during the break. Benton has chosen World Geography, and uh, Russellville has chosen American Government. And so they'll play those, and then they have a chance also to uh, bounce back the uh, missed questions and try to get more points that way as well. All right, we're Barley and Aileen, good to have you. And uh, let's see, do we have anyone else new? Michael's new, good to have you, Michael. And I think over here we're all the same. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Emma, I'm going to read these to you. You are to give the former name of the following present day nations. And you will give me the former name. Okay, are you ready? Emma, you ready? Yes. Okay, here we go. Bangladesh. West 
East Pakistan. That's correct. Belize. British Honduras. Yes, Ethiopia. Pass. Ghana. British West Africa. No, Iran. Persia. Yes, Namibia. German South Africa. No, Thailand. Siam. Yes, Congo. Defer to Graham. Zaire. No. Zimbabwe. Pass. Okay. Uh, Myanmar. Okay. All right. Uh, kind of ran out of time there of our one minute. And uh, before we get to number 10, so number 10 will not pass over. Uh, Dev, they uh, did well, one, two, three, uh, four correct, but they have left uh, some up for you to grab and get more points. Um, I, would, I need the former name of the following present day nations. Okay, uh, Ethiopia. Abyssinia. Yes, the gold, uh, mm. sorry, I messed that one up. I'll give you the extra though. Um, Namibia. German Southwest Africa. German Southwest Africa. No. Um, Congo. Belgian Congo. Belgian Congo. No. Uh, Zimbabwe. South Rhodesia. South Rhodesia. No. Uh, Sudan. Khartoum? No. That's the one I gave them because I messed up. The... All right. Um, judges, did you understand my questions on those? That's good. I can read your handwriting. Are we good? Okay. Uh, the answer to Ethiopia, I uh, know you got Ethiopia. The answer to Ghana was simply Gold Coast. Um, Namibia was Southwest Africa. Thailand, you got. Uh, Congo was the Congo, which is weird to me. And uh, Zimbabwe was Rhodesia, Rhodesia. And then the Sudan was Nubia, Nubia. All right. Um, now we're going to go to Russellville's category of American government. And Emma, you be ready over here for any bounce facts they may give you. Uh, name the Supreme Court cases being described. And these are fairly lengthy, so I'll move fast. Thank you. All right. Establish the doctrine of judicial review. Marbury v. Madison. Yes. The Constitution gives the federal government certain implied powers. McCullough v. Maryland. Yes. The federal government has the power to regulate interstate commerce. Gaymans v. Ogden. Yes. Stated that slaves were not citizens. Dred Scott v. Sanford. Yes. Uh, legalized state-ordered segregation as long as the facilities were equal. Plessy v. Ferguson. Yes. Illegally obtained material cannot be used. Map v. Ohio. Yes. Uh, the court determined that separate schools are not equal. Brown v. Board of Education? Oh, yes. Defendants unable to pay are entitled to counsel in Can criminal. Wainwright. Yes. Police must inform suspects of their rights before Miranda question. Miranda v. Arizona? Yes. Determined that a state ban on all abortions was unconstitutional. Roe v. Wade. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, very good job. Those can be confusing, but y'all handled it masterfully. So uh, since I got all 10 right, we give them a 20 point bonus. Um, and that uh, can be helpful later on down the line. All right. Do we have any challenges on this round? We do have one over here. Two challenges. OK. And uh, and you all have some over here. 
Okay, so we're going to go to Christina and Linda uh, and take a short break while they make these challenges. Okay, so it sounds like we do have some challenges in this round. It's been a while since we've actually had an official challenge, and so what do you think might be going on with this challenge? I think that maybe uh, the teams are challenging uh, answers that were given. Uh, I noticed that Russellville's students were kind of uh, signaling their coach that okay. they might have a challenge. So I think that's a, a good way to uh, for the kids to let the coach know, hey, my answer was probably right. So the coach then would look up and make sure that that answer was right. Okay. So that might be it. I'm not sure. Okay, yep. But then we also had a challenge over here on the uh, other side, mm -hmm. on Benton, and I don't know what that challenge was about. They okay. might be challenging an answer that Russellville gave, or it could be that one of their students' answers was equally as right. So it could be several things. So it was quite a round, too, because Russellville really pulled ahead in that with oh, what they yes. did, uh, knowing those cases so quickly, and it really came together. Um, talk about how do these kids prepare for something like this? Because you really need to lo know a wide gamut of information. Well, the. Uh, the things that are asked, there's a lot of times that there are things repeated. Students go to invitational uh, quiz ball tournaments all the time, and those things that are asked at those tournaments seem to show up here and here and here, and you find out. Supreme Court cases might be coming up quite a bit, right. so I need to study the Supreme Court so cases. They, they learn them. You know, and we need to know our presidents. They're gonna ask us about the vice presidents. Mm -hmm. We need to know our vice presidents. Maybe they're gonna ask about first ladies. You know, a lot of things come up. And then, as we've said before, a lot of students are specialists. So they know, okay, I'm in charge of presidents, I've gotta know them. I'm in charge of Supreme Court cases, I've gotta know them. Kind of divide you know, and conquer just, mentality. Yes, yes, and some students may have three or four categories that they have to know. And you know, composers, artists, there's all kinds of things that you could, could do. And some students like to say, well, I'm in charge of pop culture. Well, to me, that just says I'm in charge of what's going on right now. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm not an expert on pop culture, so I can't answer <laughs> sure. a lot of questions about that. But, you know, these things come up so much that you find out what what you should be learning. Mm -hmm. And as a coach, you notice that. And sure. over the years, if you coach quite a few years, you find out, hey, I need to be sure that I, my students know these categories. And the kids will make flashcards. They'll sometimes uh, just have long lists that they'll study, all kinds of things like that. And that sounds like it's just memorizing for quiz bowl, <laughs> but it does come up. I've had students come back and tell me, hey, you know, I didn't know a whole lot about this, but I knew something about it to start with, so I had a place to start. And so these things do show up later in life. <laughs> and that's a great place to start, and yes, learning it, not just memorizing it. Right. So we actually do have three challenges going on. One has been resolved, and they are still working on the other two. So something else I want to talk about is this is our first year back since the pandemic, since yes. COVID, in this live setting new set. Tell us, how have we functioned over the last bit of time? <laughs> well, COVID sort of killed everything for uh, the first year. That first year of the pandemic and because it was so new and everything was closed down yeah. and we couldn't have it. Yeah. Well then following that we had a year last year mm -hmm. where the students were in one building in UCA and the uh, other people that helped that were directing that were you know doing all the asking and all that they were in, over here in this building. So we had to make a, a big change in the way things were done. And even the 62nd round was changed in that the students had to, uh, you know, go through the 62nd round. Instead of timing, you just had all 10 questions. Wow. It was just a difference in the way things had to be done. So it was uh, very challenging for all the people that were working and for the students and the coaches. And so it made a big difference. However, quiz bowl carried on. That's right. <laughs> That's the most important part. We found a way to make it work exactly. and we're all back now this year. So the two 
Russellville challenges have been decided and now we're lurking on the Benton challenge. Right. Um, talk to me about the captains. Every team has a captain. How do right. they decide who that person is and what does that role entail? Well, the captain of the team has to assess what the other students are telling them when they have a bonus question or when they have the 60 second round questions. So it's a pretty big job in that you have to know, you know, how to kind of see does he really know that? Does she really know that? <laughs> who, who is the best at assessing and quickly answering? That's another thing, a quick answer. Yes. And um, so the captains are chosen that way. I usually, my best players were usually not the captain <laughs> because I always felt like I had one player that might be able to assess everybody and kind of listen to what everybody's saying a little bit more. And so it was, you know, a hard job, but the students kind of know who can I trust mm. and who can I not trust. And quickly so, <laughs> too, I mean that's kind of yeah. such a tough role to be yeah. in. So that's the captain's job and it's kind of hard and sometimes you'll hear the, the kids say, I uh, uh, defer to. Yes, I heard that. And, that. and when they say defer to, it means that they are just at that point saying, I can't pronounce this or I can't hear what he's saying, okay. so I will defer to him and maybe he'll have the, the answer. Calling in for a little backup. Yes. Again, we have two challenges that have been resolved, waiting on that third one to be decided on. So have you ever seen or been a part of a match where a challenge actually changes the outcome? of the points of the match? Yes. Ooh, that's gotta We've be had it. <laughs> We've had it here at some finals uh, back in the days when we had the overall final. In that time period, we had a playoff sort of form okay. where you went through and you played uh, other school, other divisions. I okay. guess you'd say like, you know, 5A might play uh, a 7A or something like that. Yeah, sure. So if that's the case, then we have, uh, you know, there was, might be a challenge, and there was a couple of times that I can remember when uh, the challenge was upheld, the teams were tied, the challenge was upheld, oh, wow. and the uh, points were taken off of one team, and it made the other team win. Wow, anything can happen, especially when it's live like this. You know, it gets very exciting. So all three challenges have now been resolved. So we're gonna go back to the quiz master and find out the judge's decisions. Steve. Well, welcome back here to Studio C and our very exciting uh, 6A state championship. And uh, we had four challenges during that time. And um, the upshot of it is that uh, three of them were denied and one was accepted. So Russellville had made a challenge um, about Namibia being known as German Southwest Africa, and that was accepted by the judges. And uh, so we're going to give 10 more points to Russellville if we haven't done it already. And the other challenges were either denied or uh, didn't affect anything. So, uh, all right, so uh, do we want to make any substitutions now going into round four? We are going to make a substitution or two. Okay, we're going to take a short break while we do that. This month on Arkansas PBS. The PBS NewsHour putting questions to those in power. There aren't enough tests. Is it time for a new approach? Today we live in a time when meaningful discourse is needed more than ever. Our mission is to renew the firing line tradition for a new generation. Only on Arkansas PBS. Sustaining membership is an easy, convenient, and affordable way for you to support the programs you love on Arkansas PBS. Sustaining members make an ongoing monthly contribution from either their checking account or credit card. Simply choose the monthly amount that fits your budget and then call or go online and we'll set it up for you. Your donation will happen automatically each month, so your support will always be current. Need to make a change to your monthly gift? Just call or email us. You're always in control. 
Knowing we can count on a certain amount of revenue each month helps Arkansas PBS better plan for the future. Call or go online to start your sustaining membership right now. This month in Passport on the PBS video app. You have one chance at life. Doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. This is your life. Twelve-year-old Marilyn wants to be an Olympian. Beating the odds, she fights to make her dreams come true. I didn't really understand how segregated the city was. The last generation standing is the one that's going to have to pick up the bill. These and other shows from Arkansas PBS are available with Passport on the PBS video app. We are back for our final round to find out who is going to be our Quiz Bowl 2022 6A state champion. Quizmaster Steve, take it away. Round four. Well, that was an exciting lightning round, and um, it turned out Russellville made an excellent choice with their category and uh, kind of uh, moved ahead a great deal, but. There's still 200 points up for grabs with our 20 toss-up questions that remain. So uh, their job is not done, uh, and Ben's job is not done. So uh, this thing could turn out either way. All right, I believe we're ready. We, uh, we're back to our normal group up here on the stage for Russellville. And over here, we have the starters for Russell, for Benton on this side. So. Everything's back to the way we started. All right. Well, good luck to both uh, schools as we move into round four. And uh, at the end of this round, uh, one of you will be our state 6A runner-up, and one of you will be our state 6A champion. Here's our first toss-up. In economics, demand is said to be this when it responds quickly to changes in prices and the reverse when it responds sluggishly. What is the term for a shift in either demand or supply of goods or services depending upon the price? All right, uh, Red, Dev? Bullish? No. Ben? All right, it is known as elasticity, elasticity. All right, question 32. Identify the English rationalist historian and scholar who is best known for writing the history of the decline and fall of the Roman Empire, a continuous narrative from the second century AD to the fall of Constantinople in 1453. Used to be you weren't a smart person if you didn't have this on your shelf somewhere. I don't know if anyone ever read it. Uh, it is Edward Gibbon, Gibbon. All right, a buckyball is a single molecule of this. All right, uh, Red, Hayden? Carbon. No. Name this form a fullerene having 60 carbon atoms. Uh, all right, uh, Joseph? Buckminster fullerene. That is absolutely right. Exhibited when dry ice is exposed to room temperature air. Uh, Benton, Joseph. Sublimation. Right. Okay. What battle fought between the Romans and the Goths in uh, August AD 378 in present day Turkey was a catastrophic defeat for the Roman army? That is the Battle of Adrianople. In architecture, this refers to a covered walkway around the inside of a building, having an open central courtyard. All right, uh, Ben and Joe. Atrium. Uh, no, that's incorrect. Uh, let me finish. Give this term, which can also mean a place such as a monastery or convent where people live secluded religious lives. 
Nothing? It is a cloister. Cloister. All right, now you all wake up now. We've got a match going on here. Let's do it. She served as Secretary of Labor during the presidency of Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Besides being the first woman appointed to a cabinet post, she also <laughs> served uh, Dev. Perkins. Perkins is right, Francis Perkins. Good. Uh, number 38, his love of Spain and passion for bullfighting resulted in uh, Death in the Afternoon, a study of an exhibition he viewed more as tragic ceremony than as sport. Name the American writer of this novel about bullfighting. Emma. Faulkner. No? Russell? All right, Tyler? Hemingway. Hemingway is the correct answer, good. Falcon cults were widespread in ancient Egypt. The falcon-headed god of Egyptian mythologies, uh, Red Justin. Horus. Yes. Let's do math computation to celebrate that. All right, find the value of the log base two of the square root of six minus one half times the log base two of three. All right, uh, Ben Blake. Log base two, three square roots of two? No. Uh, Russell, do you have an answer? The answer is one half, one half. Time out called by Russellville. Uh, this is a 30 second timeout, and uh, the, of course the teams are allowed one 30 second timeout each. And so Russellville is going to use theirs at this time. Welcome back to the studios here at AET, at, uh, pardon me, Arkansas PBS. And uh, we're glad that you could be with us uh, tuning in today. And we appreciate Arkansas PBS very much. A long, long partner with us in presenting Quiz Bowl. During the break, uh, the challenge, the uh, time out, excuse me, I'll get this right. We made several changes to both teams. So we've got Aaron in and Clara, and Ethan, and Joseph, you're still here, as is Emma. All right, and then on the Russellville side, we have Greg, and Zion, and Eden, and Rainey. All right, very nice. Good to have you all into the game here for these uh, last questions. We have 10 questions remaining uh, for a total of 100 points. Uh, so good luck to both schools. All right, y'all ready? This duo wrote the most popular operettas, often called comic operas, in the history of English theater. Name this 19th century composer and his lyricist whose satirical operettas include HMS Pinafore, 
the Pirates of Penzance, and the Mikado. Okay, that is Gilbert and Sullivan. Uh, question number 42. During his lifetime, this American novelist and critic wrote 20 novels, 112 tales, and 12 plays in addition to several volumes of travel writing and criticism. Name this author who is best remembered for his The Portrait of a Lady and the short novel ghost story, The Turn of the Screw. No answer, that is Henry James. Used to be taught in every school and now you'd be hard pressed to find him. He's fallen out of favor for a while. All right, let's do some math. Y'all liking the new math music we have this year? All right, math computation. What, what base 10 number is represented in the hexadecimal or base 16 system as four zero? All right, uh, Clara. 16. No. Russville, an answer? All right, Eden. 64. 64 it is. Good job. It's because you're in that center chair. See, that makes all the difference. All right. Its highest peak is Mount Elbrus. Name the mountain range that lies between the Black and Caspian Seas in a region. Uh, okay, Blue Emma. The Caucasus Mountains. Um... No. Uh, let's see. That Let's see. Where did I get to? Between the Black and Caspian Seas in a region that includes Armenia, Azerbaijan, uh, Georgia, and a small portion of southern Russia. Uh, Justin. The Ural Mountains? No, it's the Caucasus Mountains. It was mispronounced over here. According to Islamic tradition, he is the chief angel. Uh, Red, Justin. Gabriel. Yes. Identify the branch of geology that deals with the physics of the earth and its atmosphere. Uh, blue, Emma. Geophysics. You're right. Question 47. In U.S. parliamentary procedure, what method of closing a debate and bringing about an immediate vote to be taken on the question is known as what? Uh, Red, Justin. Closure. Yes. Question 48. In this Nikolai Gogol novel, landowners must pay taxes on dead serfs until a new census removes them. Uh, blue, Emma. Dead souls. Right. What present day church has its headquarters in Salt Lake City? Uh, red, Justin. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints. Yes. What term refers to values which, unlike a vector, contain only a magnitude scale? Uh, Eden. Scalar? Yes. And that was the last question of the match. Coaches, do we have any challenges? None here, none over here. Okay, so with no challenges, our score here at the end of our 6A championship is Benton 190, Russellville 335. Benton, you are our 6A state runner-up, and Russellville, you are our current uh, 6A state champion. Congratulations. We're going to go over to Christine now for the um, uh, some discussion, and we're going to set the stage up for our trophy presentation.
Wow, a very good matchup and very entertaining, very intense, and congratulations to both of you, both of you. Well, as we get ready for the awards presentation, let's take a moment and meet some kids that we might see on this stage in a few years. Here are the 2022 Quiz Bowl Junior High MVPs. Welcome back. We're here with Carolyn Shry and friends with Arkansas Governor's Quiz Bowl Association, and we've got some more awards to give out. Oh, we definitely do. We've got to award these 6A champions today and send them home with some money and some trophies. First off, we will give our second place team over here, Benton, their second place trophy and their big check for $1,500. A round of applause for Benton. You guys were fantastic. And $1,500 is no small amount, so congratulations yeah. to you guys. And they get to split it up, so it's not a large amount for anybody, but it does buy one or two college books. Absolutely. And, and over here, we uh, we need to uh, award our first place champions, Russellville, with their $3,000 check and their trophy. Congratulations. <laughs> Love all the smiles. Way to go. Oh, definitely. And they get this new item this year, a banner, which you get to display. It's not, you know, uh, I think I'm... Uh, <laughs> well, the other direction might be better. Maybe not quite as good as a, uh, you know, one out on the highway, but it's close. It's all about bragging rights, right? You get to display this proudly? Yes, very good. <laughs> and now we need to award our MVP for this uh, fine group here. And that would be someone over here like um, Emma. <laughs> oh, congratulations, Emma. <laughs> then we have to also recognize some other folks that are not on these two teams, but also made the all tournament team. And again, we have a high point player, which is someone that exceeded Emma's average, actually by quite a bit, at State, John Eckert from Sheridan. Uh, he had a, ma a amazing 13.4 average, which is really high. Then we also need to recognize a couple of players over here on the Russellville team, who also made all tournament. Dev over here, obviously, who was answering a lot of questions. <laughs> Congratulations. And also Hayden. Hayden. And Hayden. Congrats. Yes, indeed. And we've got one more person to recognize. Also on a team not here, Wesley Bonner from Lake Hamilton. That would be our 6A all tournament team. Congrats. Round of applause for everybody. And that looks like the group. Well, wonderful. One more big round of applause from everybody here for all the competitors.
You all really did a wonderful job. So congrats to all of you. Thank you for being here and thank you, Carolyn. Okay, so we have six new champions so far. Only one more to go. That is our 1A match between Haas Hall Rogers and Norfolk. You are watching Quiz Bowl 2022 only on Arkansas PBS. Be sure to stick around.